Hi, I'm Kristen Quickie, the General Chair for SC20. Welcome to your first SC conference. The premier conference event for HPC, SC presents the best of the field in high performance computing, networking, storage, and analysis. This year in particular, we are exploring what makes us more than HPC, how we, as a community, can use supercomputing to better the world around us. This year's program is jam-packed with hundreds of technical talks, posters, panels, workshops, exhibits, and much more. With so much to see, we want to make sure that you have all the tools you need to make the most of your SC experience. In this video, we will be diving into the SC technical program, exhibits, SciNet, students at SC, and our virtual platform. Thank you for attending, and we hope you have a fabulous SC20. Welcome to SC20. Here are some tips to help you prepare for and navigate the virtual conference. Note that all sessions are scheduled in Eastern Standard Time. Presenters will be available for live Q&A text chat sessions after the initial broadcast. A second broadcast will be available in Japan Standard Time to accommodate our global audience. Most conference content will remain available on demand for up to six months. You can use the virtual portal to view all of the conference content or download the conference app from the App Store or Google Play. You will need your email address and registration code to log in. When you first sign into the virtual platform, you will be able to set up your personal profile, including your interests, photo, and privacy settings, especially if you want to interact with others. If you've attended SC in the past, you know that there's a lot of content and it's difficult to see it all. We know it's a lot to take in, but the benefit of being virtual is that you can watch more of the content on your own schedule. Most of the content will be available through the platform for six months. We look forward to seeing you online at SC20. Welcome to the uh, supercomputing briefing for first time attendees. Uh, this is going to be for the technical program. Um, my name is Vladimir Getov. I'm at the University of Westminster in London, and I'm also area editor for HPC in IEEE Computer. The technical program is a major component of supercomputing um, as a conference. Supercomputing is, is a very rich event, uh, attracting um, well above 10,000 attendees every year. So uh, making your way around and selecting things and the events that you want to attend is absolutely important because there is a lot of, of things happening, uh, um, usually in parallel. So the technical program includes, of course, mainly the technical papers. There is a number of panels, tutorials, workshops. Uh, there is a, a, a very interesting type of uh, uh, sessions, birds of a feather, or as we call them, BOFs. These are open sessions for people with similar interests to get together, have a discussion, uh, and of course the topics will have to be important for our community. Of course, uh, most interesting are the keynotes, the plenary sessions, the invited talks, and the very well-known Gordon Bell Prize, the test of time when we recognize that a paper published in supercomputing like 20 years ago uh, has made significant impact to the development of the field. The top 500 supercomputers is another very interesting uh, event when the new ranking is published. There is a, a, a number of posters and in recent years, supercomputing plays a lot of interest to reproducibility, but also inclusivity and early career. So this year, um, the tech includes 96 papers, 40 workshops with more 500 workshop talks, 87 posters, 16 birds of a feather sessions. This includes the top 500 supercomputers, which is technically a, a buff. 30 tutorials, uh, 10 panels, and 18 state practice presentations, which is a new category. Here, the keynote is uh, in the morning on day, November 16th. 
uh, our keynote speaker is Bjorn Stevens from Max Planck Institute in Germany. Uh, Bjorn is director of the Max Planck Institute for Meteorology, and it is, he is also professor at the University of Hamburg. Climate modeling is particularly important and has always been one of the top application areas for supercomputing. So this year's keynote is from deep thoughts to destination Earth climate science in the age of exascale. Our plenary panel is on Monday, November 16th in the afternoon, and the plenary panel is going to cover a discussion in the area of more than HPC. In addition, we are going to have 12 invited talks. They are spread around the main days of the technical program, Tuesday morning and afternoon, Wednesday morning and afternoon, and Thursday morning and afternoon. The Society Awards are, again, something very, very interesting that supercomputing attendees uh, have been paying particular attention to. This year, we're going to have the traditional ACM Gordon Bell Prize, which recognizes outstanding achievement in high-performance computing. But in addition, this year and next year, 2021, we're going to have uh, the Gordon Bell Special Prize for HPC-based COVID-19 research. And both those prizes are going to be announced and presented uh, at Supercomputing. Another uh, very popular prize is the ACM IEEE CS Ken Kennedy Award, which recognizes substantial contributions to programmability and productivity in computing and substantial community service on mentoring. Again, uh, this is a very prestigious prize, and we, we are very interested to find out who is going to get this prize this year. Another one is the IEEE Computer Society Sydney Fenbach Memorial Award, which recognizes outstanding contributions in HPC applications using innovative approaches. Overall, the technical program is a, a very rich set of presentations uh, and discussions and, and, and panels and uh, workshops and tutorials this year. Uh, again, welcome to Supercomputing 20 and enjoy the conference and have fun. Okay, hello, I'm Jamie Van Randwijk. I am the SC20 Exhibits Chair. I work for Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. I'd like to tell you a little bit about um, exhibits this year. It's changed um, as has the rest of the conference. Um, by virtue of where we sit this year, we've gone virtual as well. We have a great exhibits lineup prepared for um, everyone that's going to be attending online. We're gonna have a lot of the same exhibitors that we always have um, in industry and the research space. Uh, we'll be covering a lot of the same, um, all of the same uh, industry areas, uh, including HPC, networking, storage, software, visualization, AI, and more. And uh, you will see a lot of great research being shared from university, government labs, and other um, nonprofits around the world that are um, talking about their really good research projects. First of all, um, just to uh, give you a high-level overview, virtual exhibits, we're going to have more than 300 companies um, exhibiting in our virtual exhibit hall. All those who had previously signed up to exhibit in person this year all have um, been converted to virtual exhibits, and we've um, additionally brought some new exhibitors on board uh, for this op opportunity. Uh, we're going to, again, have research and industry booths, as we always do. Um, they're uh, going to be essentially websites with added features this year. Uh, we're going to have booth giveaways, opportunities for you to go to those booths and uh, win prizes or get um, uh, online e-gift cards sent to you or, or get things um, sent through the mail possibly by the, um, by the exhibitors that are participating this year. We will have booth sessions. That's the opportunity to uh, listen to a 
uh, representative from a booth give a presentation on a new product or new service, a research project or something going on, a partnership that maybe they have. Um, it's the same thing that you would go and sit down in a booth or maybe stand there for, for 15, 20, 30 minutes and hear about something new that's going on with that exhibitor. We're going to have that opportunity through these online booth sessions as well. Um, those are going to be um, scheduled at certain times, but they're all going to be on demand as well for um, you to view at any point in time. And then uh, exhibitors are going to be hosting additional after hours events that may not be, that won't be taking place during the um, core of the uh, SC conference during the day, but maybe in the evenings or off hours, they'll be having events online. These are going to be purely scheduled by the exhibitors themselves, and it may involve a Zoom call of some sort or um, um, online bingo or some other, some other event that they're planning for um, attendees at SC20. Uh, just real quickly, here's here's a, an early version of our website and the um, exhibits uh, as it's currently uh, as it currently stands. It's going to be a, a long list of exhibitors. Uh, we have um, a lot of uh, various things that the exhibitors can sign up to um, to promote their site, and they're going to have a lot of um, opportunities for you as attendees to come and learn more and to gather more information, even including a one-on-one uh, -on -one chat feature for those exhibitors that choose to um, choose to provide it. Um, exhibits is more than just the exhibit hall, though. I want to remind folks that we are once again having the exhibitor forum this year. That's an opportunity for our exhibitors to present on a broad range of topics um, that are important to them, either research or uh, industry-wise. Um, so we're going to have 27 different exhibitor forum presentations going on uh, during the um, 17th, 18th, and 19th of November. And then we're also partnering with our students at SC program for the job fair. And that's an opportunity to connect with, uh, to connect um, anyone with employers that are seeking um, seeking employees. Uh, for the first time ever, we're um, allowing more than just students to participate this year. Um, in the past, it's been um, focused on students and postdocs, but we're opening up the job fair to all those uh, seeking a job this year. Um, there are a lot of great companies and uh, research organizations already signed up with, with job fair booths, so we encourage you to um, upload your resume and participate in that. And then um, if you're uh, an exhibitor and you wanna um, sign up for a job fair booth, it's not too late to do that now. Additionally, um, we're offering the resume workshop, which is uh, something that we give um, to students every year. We help them work through um, putting together a good resume. We have volunteers from the community, including volunteers from both our um, SC um, committee, as well as others in the community that um, have experience writing resumes, reading resumes, hiring, and um, filling spots within their organizations. And so they will be offering uh, feedback, tips, and tools to um, those students who want to learn how to write a better resume, and they will give you feedback directly on your resume. So that's a great opportunity. Uh, that pretty much wraps it up. That's our exhibits event for the year. Uh, um, I hope you come and check it out at SC20. We have a lot of great things going on and a lot of really good companies and other organizations presenting. Thanks. Welcome first-time attendees to the SC Experience. I'm Kevin Hayden, Senior Network Engineer at the U.S. Department of Energy's Argonne National Laboratory and SciNet Chair for SC20. SciNet is SC's fast, powerful, volunteer-built network. An all-volunteer community of high-performance networking ex experts share their time and skills to plan, build, and operate SciNet each year for the SC Conference. In return, they benefit from an unparalleled, immersive, professional development experience. They gain hands-on experience with cutting-edge equipment in a multi-vendor environment. They expand their professional networks, working alongside experts from industry, government, and education. And they work in specialized teams ranging from wide area transport to wireless, architecture to contributor relations, fiber to DevOps, and more. During the past 30 years, SciNet has become the most powerful and advanced network on earth for each week we've held the SC conference, connecting the SC community to the world. SciNet has not only provided internet connectivity for SC conference attendees, 
It has also pushed boundaries of networking technologies and innovation through workshops, demos, and collaborative opportunities. For SC19 in Denver, Colorado, Signet was built by more than 200 volunteers across 23 teams from 90 unique home institutions, including 14 participants in the NSF-funded Women in IT Networking at SC program, which we know as WINS. The network was built with more than $80 million in hardware and services provided by 34 industry leading contributors, 66 miles of fiber and 256 wireless access points. And it delivered 4.22 terabits per second of wide area capacity, enough to download the entire Netflix HD movie library in 42 seconds. In this video, you can get a closer look at the Sign Up Volunteers experience from SC18 in Dallas. Signet happens thanks to individuals like you. If you are interested in volunteering for Signet, please consider applying to become part of the SC team of volunteers. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Christine Harvey, and I'm the chair of the Students at SC program for SC20. I'm here to tell you about student programs at the conference. So to kick things off, I'll give you a little bit of background on the Students at SC component of the conference. Our main goal of Students at SC is to educate students on HPC career options and skills. We really want to provide opportunities for students to build their professional network and increase the diversity of the HPC community. Students at SC has two main components, student cohorts and then our events and programs. The student cohorts are groups of students that apply leading up to the conference and then they're selected for participation ahead of time. First off, we have our student volunteers who help support conference logistics and execution. You'll notice student volunteers helping moderate your sessions in the virtual platform. There are also quite a few other student volunteers behind the scenes working on conference planning and our network, Signet. Our student cluster competition is traditionally a program where teams of six undergrad students build a cluster, ship them to the convention center, and then compete in a 48 hour nonstop competition to run a variety of applications on their hardware. This competition has recently included a cloud component, but this year the entire thing will be hosted in Microsoft Azure. The VSCC will kick off on November 8th and run through the 11th. The HPC Immersion Program is sponsored by SIG HPC and tries to grow and develop new members of the HPC community. And our Computing for Change Program is another SIG HPC sponsored event. This is a collaborative challenge where teams of students compete and apply data science and computational thinking to social challenges. In addition to these cohorts, we have a variety of programs, including mentoring efforts, an alumni program, sessions specifically curated for students, which includes hands-on learning, panels, and lightning talks. We'll also have a job fair, scavenger hunt, and even a virtual tours program for students that aren't able to attend SC. Mentoring and networking are a huge part of the student experience at SC, and this year we're gonna do our very best to implement this virtually. So first, we have two major mentoring programs which are open to all SC attendees. Our mentor protege matching program pairs students and early career professionals with a mentor. The goal for this is to really create a professional and personal relationship where the mentor can provide advice and guidance on building a career as well as the ins and outs of the HPC world. This may sound a little awkward to do online. So if you join the program, we'll help you with conversation topics and things like how often to meet with your mentor or protege. In addition to the paired relationships, we'll be offering a speed mentoring program where attendees, students, and professionals get together for quick meetings and virtual breakout rooms to connect and ask for advice on different topics. Pre-registration is required for both events. I have short links listed on this slide. Please register by November 2nd if you're interested in either program. In addition to the mentoring programs, we'll have additional networking events and we'll be sharing more information on those on our conference landing page within the virtual platform. I had mentioned earlier that we have sessions specifically tailored for students. 
So during the midday East Coast timeframe, we'll be hosting sessions via the conference platform or external meeting platforms. Information on how to join all these events will be clearly displayed on our conference landing page. We're covering a wide variety of topics here, ranging from a panel on different careers in HPC to a session on overcoming struggles and hurdles in your career pathway. Additionally, we'll have two hands-on sessions on Thursday, November 12th on creating your personal elevator pitch and perfecting your resume. These sessions will be offered twice to help support multiple time zones. Our resume workshop will require submitting your resume ahead of time and pre-registration. I have more details on that available on the website linked at the bottom. So if you want to learn more about that, go to sc20.supercomputing.org slash programs slash students and join our mentoring uh, programs and our resume workshops. So finally, just to wrap things up, here's a quick reference to our resources. So first, there's the SC20 website, which you can see over on the right. This is the best place to get students at SC information. The image on the left shows a preview of our conference platform landing page, where you'll be able to see the schedule during the conference. And finally, you can check us out on social media. Our handle is most often at StudentsSC, and we have profiles and student groups on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and we even have a special Students at SC playlist on YouTube. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope to see you in all the students at SC sessions during the conference.